Inside Afghanistan today, a U.S. Air Force transport plane crashed on takeoff. Of ten people on board, seven are known to have survived. It's believed the others died. The MC-130 Special Operations Transport went down near Gardez, a staging area for U.S. forces hunting enemy fighters. The crash does not appear to have been caused by hostile fire. Other developments today in the war on terror include these. An official in Pakistan says a man detained there is being questioned by the FBI about Jose Padilla, the one-time Chicago thug now suspected of trying to plot a dirty bomb attack in the United States. Police in France arrested five people linked to alleged shoe bomber Richard Reed, and Germany warned of a possible al-Qaeda plot to shoot down commercial airliners. As CBS's John Roberts reports tonight, these developments overseas coincide with a changing strategy in the war on terror here at home. From his signing of a bill to defend against bioterror to this first meeting with the Homeland Security Advisory Council to an arm-twisting session with congressional committee leaders, President Bush's focus today was all about protecting America. We won the first battle, or we're winning the first battle in the war of the 21st century, which was in Afghanistan. With operations in Afghanistan well in hand, the war on terror is shifting inward, unlike any conflict the U.S. has fought before. We had oceans that separated us from our enemies. Um, and it, those oceans don't make any difference anymore. Um, ge the geography doesn't make any difference. From the very beginning, President Bush has counseled Americans this will be a war with many fronts. Ours is not a war just of soldiers and aircraft. This is a war fought with diplomacy, by the investigations of law enforcement, by gathering intelligence. But fighting a war on the home front is proving far more complex than military operations abroad turf battles over which agencies will go into the Department of Homeland Security, second-guessing on whether to include the CIA and FBI, charges of civil rights violations and the detention of suspected terrorists. Even the Maryland police force, which actually pulled over one of the 9-11 hijackers in this traffic stop and let him go, said today it won't comply with White House requests to run every incident through an immigration check. We don't want to engage in INS duties as a police department. We want immigrants to call us when they have problems. We want to help them solve their problems. When they become victims, we want to feel like we're there to help them, not to ask their status. President Bush has no choice but to ask every agency for a maximum effort to defeat terrorism. His top lieutenants have predicted that another act of terrorism against America is all but certain. And in this election year, President Bush needs to be seen as doing all he can to protect the homeland. Dan? John Roberts reporting live from the White House.